All right, like always, I want to thank everybody for coming out and uh, supporting Penn State football, the, the media as well as the fans. Uh, under the conditions, you know, we had we had a really good crowd. On normal conditions, under ideal conditions, a lot of programs around the country would die to have the crowd that we had tonight. So very appreciative of everybody that was up in the stands. Uh, when you talk about, you know, kind of critical stats, uh, we did not win the turnover battle, which is something that uh, we were leading the country in. So that was you know, obviously one criticism, uh, but explosive plays, we won. Third down battle, we won. Sack battle, we won. Starting field position battle, we won. Penalty battle, we won. Uh, so a lot of positives there. You know, defensively, we were suffocating all night long on, on one of the most explosive um, offenses uh, in the country. When you look at the explosive play percentage, the most explosive offense that we had played this year from a statistical perspective. Um, you know, defensively, um, I thought early on we had to get some things kind of cleaned up, but once we did, I thought we played balanced offense again tonight and complimentary football. And then special teams, obviously the story of the night is, is Daquan Hardy, the same guy that me and Terry went to watch in the state championship game and, um, uh, and earn, earned a Penn State scholarship by how he performed, scoring all different ways in one, of, one, one, of, one way uh, as a punt returner. So, that was awesome for, to, for us to, to have success with that tonight and specifically for him. So, uh, good win. Uh, we'll uh, obviously appreciate this one tonight, enjoy it tonight, then wake up tomorrow morning and get started on our next opponent. Um, but again, I appreciate everybody coming out and I open up the questions. We'll go Rich and then we'll go Pickle. James, to your left. Right here. Hey, Rich. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Why did you decide to try Daquan as the punt returner, and what what is his value to your team overall? Yeah, you know, I, I just kind of talked about that in the locker room with our guys. You know, here's a guy. Um, you, know, you talk about opportunities, right? High school guys trying to create opportunities to go to college. College guys trying to create opportunities for certain roles, whatever it may be. Uh, and he's a perfect example. You know. And him and Caton kind of went into a competition all summer camp um, with uh, catching punts and returning punts. Um, battled back and forth. Caton had done a nice job of catching the ball all year long, um, but we weren't we weren't very explosive. We weren't making a ton of uh, yardage, and that's that's no knock on Caton. He was doing a nice job. But we're looking to try to create some more big plays, not just on offense, but in special teams as well, kickoff return, pump return. Uh, and the catch percentage in practice was similar. Uh, so we wanted to get him some opportunities and some reps. And, and obviously, he did a, did a phenomenal job with it. So we got two guys that we feel like we can win with. But Day Day obviously showed tonight uh, that he could be special. I think he broke the school record, um, not just for a game, but for a season. Uh, in touch, in, kick, in pump returns for touchdown. What is his value to your team? It seems like he yeah. always seems to be. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't answer touch? that part of your question. Okay. Um, here's a guy that's been a nickel for us for multiple years and has really dominated that role. I think all the way back to the Purdue game last year, uh, that huge play he made on the slot fade late in the game was a huge play in the game. We started, we started to play him a little bit more at corner now. And he's shown the ability to do that, nickel and corner. Uh, and then on top of that now, you know, on special teams in a lot of different roles, but now specifically as a returner. Um, and this is gonna, this is gonna change things for us. This, this is gonna create issues for people that are evaluating us on film and uh, something that's gonna cause them kind of long nights in, in how they're gonna defend him. So. Um, guys that can make big plays and be explosive and protect the football are, are valuable, and he's done a done a phenomenal job for us. And I'm I'm not surprised. This is kind of who he's been. Pickle and Corey. Coach, now that you're through your bye week and your first six games, do you like where your team is at? Do you feel like you've hit some of the benchmarks or goals, if you will, that you set for them or yourself or your coaching staff uh, before the season started at this point? Well, I think more than anything, right. You know, we, we want to be 1-0 and each week. That's the obvious thing, and we were able to do that up to this point. 
I think the other thing that's important to me is, are we getting better each week? Um, and I feel like we're, we're doing that. You know, even tonight, you know, we gave up some yards there at the end. But again, my argument is the value of those guys getting in the game playing is going to pay off for us down the road. There's some things that we got to get cleaned up. Um, there's no team in the country, there's no team in the NFL that there's not areas that, that you know, you get critiqued about. Uh, constructive criticism that you're trying to get better in certain areas. But overall, um, I like where we're at. We have found ways to win. We've won different ways. We've won on the road. We've won at home. We've won at 11 a.m. We've won in the rain. Uh, we've run, won in the heat. Uh, conference opponents, non-conference opponents. And I just think we're getting better. Even from a practice perspective, you know, I challenged them last week and uh, we're just practicing on a, on a more consistent level at a high level. And I don't care whether it's college football or any other industry, um, you're ultimately judged on consistency. How, how consistent can you be in the things that you're trying to achieve? Uh, and I really like this team from that perspective. And we talked a lot in the offseason or, or preseason about leadership and what this team is going to look like from the leadership standpoint. I think that's probably one of the big best things that they're doing right now is, is leading from a how to practice on a consistent basis. So, um, so far, so good. Corey, then Brennan. James, of all the things that you can praise your defense for, are there one or two specific areas that you stand back and think that's especially impressive? That's that's special. Well, I, I think I think you know the first thing that probably jumps out is is the turnovers, but the reality is the turnover margin is more of a team stat. And obviously, defensively doing a great job, but offensively we've done a really good job tonight. We put the ball on the ground at one time, which which was disappointing. Um, but I think the biggest thing is the defense has been able to control the game, the three and outs. The field position. Um, I think our offense is playing really good complementary football the way our defense is playing, but they're also getting the ball a lot of times on short fields because of the three and outs, because of the three and outs that we're able to create. Um, I also just think, like I've talked to you guys in the past, we play a style where when you're the offensive coordinator or the opposite head coach and you watch the tape, there's just not a lot of give me yards. There's not a lot of times where you cut the film on it and you say, okay, they're giving us field access. They're giving us the hitch or the field out because most college uh, quarterbacks can't make that throw. There's not a whole lot that on that on tape. So it can be challenging to get three or four yards. Um, to me, it's, it's their ability to control the game. Um, and, and really put our team in position to be successful. And then from that point, I think we're playing, you know, complimentary football. And uh, I think offensively, our ability to be balanced. Right now, we're able to throw and run the ball uh, to win. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily work, say we're able to do one uh, exclusively, but you don't have to do one exclusively. But I think we're balanced right now, so I just, I think we're playing winning football, and that's that's probably going to look different every week, uh, based on our opponent and based on the matchup. But we just we got to continue to find ways to win. That's that's really all that matters. You got to find ways to win each week in college football. Back to the scheduling point I was making earlier in the week, which became interesting. We're going to do three more, Brennan, then uh, Jared, and we'll finish with Neil. James, following up on Greg's question, how have those first six games prepared Drew specifically for what he's going to face the second half of the season, and obviously this upcoming week, which I think you can talk about now, which is going to be kind of a different level of, of opponent and a different atmosphere than you've seen on the road? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm going to meet with you guys, I think, on Tuesday and Wednesday, so I'll talk about next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. But to your point about Drew, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's been an ideal situation. 
Um, we've been able to get a first time starter, a ton of experience, normal downs, two minute situations, third down situations, been able to be balanced and be able to run and throw. Um, so I think it's I think it's I think it's ideal. It's an ideal situation uh, with a you know offensive line that's playing really well, with a left tackle that's playing well, with a you know with a running game you know that's effective, with experience at the tight end position. Um, so I think it's it's been ideal. He's been in a ton of different situations last year as a true freshman. Uh, but still got into almost every game and a lot of times in, in some challenging situations like the first game at Purdue and then this season. So I think it's ideal, you know, but, but again, you know, we got to keep growing. The thing that makes me feel good about Drew is he's, he's very humble um, and his approach is consistent in, in how he prepares and how he works. Uh, that's comforting as a head coach and as an offensive coordinator to have guys like that. And it's not just Drew, to be honest with you. It's Drew, it's Bo, and it's Jackson. They all do a, a phenomenal job from that standpoint. Mike and Danny have done a really good job with them. So we just got to continue to build that. But we got to get better this week. And we're going to have to get better every week um, you know, this season for us to go where we want to go. Jared, over here on the left, and then Thank Neil. You. Hey, Jared. Um, earlier in the season, you said if your second tight end is good enough to start, you wouldn't mind running 12 personnel compared to 11. Obviously, today, both tight ends scored, but your receiving core has also been great. What does it mean to your offense to be able to switch from both 11 and 12 personnel, even 21 personnel? Just to be clear, I think what I said was the whole discussion about 12 personnel, 11, the second tight end is actually competing with the third wide receiver is like what I think what we were really talking about. But your point is still valid. And the fact that we can go to a 12 personnel or 11 personnel, that we're able to run the ball out of both sets, personnel groups, excuse me, that we're able to get 12 personnel and line up in traditional run sets, traditional tight end sets with wings, or dare I say fullback in the backfield, or get in non-traditional tight end sets and get in more spread sets, and our tight ends have the ability to do both, that's when tight ends become the most valuable. And that's when as a defensive coordinator, you can't just put them into a category. If your second tight end is essentially a big wide out, then they're just gonna treat them like a wide out in the way they call the defense. So, uh, it's been it's been great. You know, we've been we've been fortunate uh, to recruit and develop uh, a really good tight end room. Uh, we got we you know got that rolling right now. I think that's another thing that's been a real positive for Drew is having these big targets to go to with the ball that are very consistent guys, very dependable guys, uh, and also have the ability to be explosive as well. Uh, and they're high percentage type throws, which also helps. So uh, it's 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 all good. Last question, Neil. All right. So I guess I understand that you're not ready to offer a preliminary assessment of Ohio State. High deal. <laughs> Hi, James. Yeah. Um, Did I understand that right? Yeah, you you can ask because you guys do that anyway. There's things you know I'm not going to answer. You ask. You can you can ask. But Tuesday we're gonna we're gonna spend some time together. We're gonna get back together as a group. I think we do that every Tuesday, right? Then Wednesday we're going to get together and we're going to talk about it. I, I just want to have like a few hours of normalcy and like hang out with my wife, my buddy Mighty from Pittsburgh comes to all the games. I want the players to enjoy it for a couple hours because as we know, once Sunday hits and Sunday night hits and my tweet goes out, that's all anybody's going to want to talk about. So I just want a couple hours of normalcy. Now, this long, was it with, what's the word that I just gave? Diatribe? I was gonna, that's the word I was going to use, but I didn't know if it was correct. <laughs> this long diatribe I just gave, and Neil's just staring at me the whole time. It hasn't changed that he's going to ask this question. Well, I wonder during the open day whether you watched the Ohio State Maryland game since you were open, since you had both of them on the horizon. Where was I? 
on the open. Well, you have all this technology. You know, I thought so you think I'm standing on a high school sideline at a high school game watching <laughs> other games? No. So I think I, I, I covered this. Wednesday night, I flew to Connecticut. Wednesday morning, I had breakfast in Connecticut with one of our commits. Thursday, I, the Thursday after breakfast, I flew to North Carolina, recruited North Carolina all night, all day. That night, I flew to Florida. All day Friday, I recruited Florida. Friday night, I flew back, saw my wife for a couple hours, didn't get back till late. Saturday, flew to New Jersey, watched a game. Got in a car, uh, yeah, no, then I flew to Massachusetts and watched a game in Massachusetts and then didn't get back here until like 9.30. I will tell you, I checked the ESPN scores. Whenever I check the ESPN scores on my phone, it goes immediately to top, to top 25. Then I hit the button, it says 1A, and I, I look at all the scores. That's about what I got, then I got home, laid in my bed for about an hour with my wife. She asked me a thousand questions. We watched the highlights. I saw highlights from the games and the teams that you're talking about. I don't have any follow up to that. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> that, this is the first time in nine years. <laughs> but, but Tuesday, I promise you guys, I'll answer all your questions. Wednesday, I'll answer all your questions. Trust me, it'll be, it'll have all my attention, and I know it'll have all your attention. I'll be happy to talk about it then. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jim. I was at least sneaky about it. Very. Neil's not, he's not. I know, he's, there's no subtlety. <laughs>